Good morning everyone. So, we are discussing about the dialysis process during the, in the membrane based separation processes and we have seen how, how to uh, what, what is the driving force in a typical dialysis process and what is the uh, batch dialysis and what is the continuous dialysis. Now, batch dialysis is not very feasible because we, are, we are already seen that batch or any, any batch operation in membrane separation is the worst performer, but, but they are very important. Um, uh, if you would like to estimate some of the internal parameters, those will be useful to uh, model or calculate the performance of a continuous system. Okay. So, there in case of continuous dialysis and if it uh, if the feed and the dialysate flows in the counter current manner, then the driving force will be maximum and you will be getting the best performance. Now, we are talking about the various resistances of uh, you know offering in the um, uh, continuous dialysis. We have we have uh, we have seen there is a mass transfer boundary layer or we call it a thin film, thin mass transfer film in the feed side as well as in the permeate side. Okay. And in the last class, we, we assumed a partition coefficient simply to define to connect the surface concentration at the of the solute at the membrane and that is in the bulk. Now, in this class, we will look into the more realistic type of modeling and the detailed situation what you will encounter in continuous dialysis, counter current dialysis operation. Okay. Now, let us first look into various resistances that will be occurring during a continuous dialysis operation. Uh, let us say this is the housing that we will be having and two compartments will be separated by a dialysis membrane and this is the fit side and this is the dialyzed side. And you are going to send the feed and the feed is coming out and on the other hand in the counter current manner uh, you are sending the dialyzed and getting the dialyzed out. out dialyzed in this is feed in feed out. Because of this concentration gradient the solutes like urea small, small molecular solute like urea creatinine they will be permeating from the feed side to the dialyzed side. So, the feed will be getting devoid of this harmful toxic chemicals. So, that is the idea. So, let us look into the various resistances or the um, uh, re resistive films those will be occurring. So, this is a schematic of continuous dialyzer and what are the various resistive films? Let us say this is the fit site, this is the dialyzed site and you will be having a film of solute over the membrane sur surface in that fit site a film of the solutes deposited over the dialyzed surface. So, we denote this as R f, this is as R d okay, and there is a resistance offered by membrane itself. So, R f is nothing but the liquid film resistance. And what is R D? R D is nothing but liquid film resistance at the dialysate site. Okay. So there are an an R M is the membrane resistance or the, the offer the resistance offered by the membrane material against the transport of solute through it. So there are three resistances are in series. One is the liquid film resistance in feed side, another is the membrane resistance, another is the liquid film resistance in the dialyzed side. These three resistances are in series and what, uh, and what is the concentration difference against these three resistances we will be working on. One will be the feed concentration in the bulk C i f and another is the uh, you know, bulk concentration in the dialyzed side, bulk concentration in the feed side and bulk concentration in the dialyzed side. Now, let us look into the concentration profile in this scenario. Now, I am just replacing the chambers by the you know um, the by, by the by the uh, f uh, concentrations. So, you will be having it is just exploded version of the film. Okay. This is the this is the film in feed site 
and this is the film in dialysate site. So, the C i f let us say let us put a bar that indicates the bulk concentration in the fit side and C i f is the concentration of the solute at the membrane surface uh, uh, in, in membrane fit, in the fit side okay. and there will be the dialysate concentration C i d at the membrane surface and then it goes to the dialysate concentration C i d bar. So, let us put the nomenclature C i f bar is nothing but the bulk concentration of solute in fit side in fit at steady state of course, C i f is uh, interface concentration that means solute concentration at interface in fit side and C i d is nothing but the interface concentration in dialyzate side and C i d bar is basically the bulk concentration of solute. in dialyzate side. So, therefore, you can you will be having uh, three resistances and against these three resistances these concentrations will 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 basically operate in the fit in the fit side the concentration that, that that is basically at the two ends will be nothing but bulk concentration and the surface concentration on the membrane surface the, the concentration across the membrane is uh, the solid concentration in the fit side and solid concentration at the interface in the dialyzate side and in the dialysate side uh, film the concentration difference is nothing but the surface concentration and the bulk concentration. So, under these three uh, resistances you can write down and they are since they are occurring in series you can expect that the flux that is nothing but the current will be same in, in the circuit okay, that is coming over that is going through over this uh, three resistances. Now, what is that current? Current in this case will be nothing but the solute flux. What is the definition of the current? It is basically charge flux, right? Charge flux per unit time that is the current. And in the similar case here, it will be the concentration flux that means that means per unit area normal to the flow flow direction per unit time. So it is a solute flux. So solute flux you can write, write down as n i is nothing but C i of bar minus C i f divided by the resistance in the film side we call it uh, in the resistance of the film resistance in the fit side we call it as R f. Okay. That is the across liquid film in fit side. Okay. The same will be equal to d i m over l divided by multiplied by c i f minus c i d. So, this is across the dialysis membrane and this will be nothing but c i d minus c i d bar divided by r d multiplied by c i d minus c i d bar across liquid film in dialyzate site. Okay. So, with this you can define an overall resistance in the in the circuit. How will you get that? You multiplied by n i multiplied both side by r f okay, multiplied both side by this quantity uh, I have already write it, written it right. So, this is not required. Okay. Fine. So, just multiply both sides by denominator and add, add, add all the equations up. If you really do that, what we will be getting is that n i multiplied by r f plus l by d i m plus r d is equal to c i f bar minus c i f plus c i f 
minus C i d plus C i d minus C i d bar. I just add all the three equations up. So, all the all the interface you know intermediate concentrations will be cancelled out and you will be getting the difference of two bulk concentration that is in the fit side and in the dialyzed side. So, you can so n i the solute flux can be written as now C i f minus C i d bar divided by uh, r overall the r f plus L by D I M plus R D and these three resistances are in series. So, you can write it as C I F bar minus C I D bar divided by R overall. So, we can define an overall resistance. Okay. So, in the process, so the most important thing is to estimate given as given a you know uh, the, the performance of the, the concentration to which you would like to reduce uh, the uh, value from the feed concentration etcetera. It is very important what is this transmembrane solute flux to estimate that that I uh, discussed in the last class. If you do that then you can find out that if your target is to remove this much kg per hour then you can find out what is the membrane area that is required to serve this purpose. So, it, is, it will be of extremely helpful in doing the design of dialysis of, of any dialyzer. Okay. Now, let us go through the more detail how to estimate these resistances, these uh, uh, you know uh, film resistances in the fit side and the diesel dialyzed side as well as the as through the membrane. So, overall resistance can be now write can be written as R naught is equal to R f plus L by D i m plus R d. Now, if you remember that this overall the, the film side resistance, this resistance is nothing but inverse of mass transfer coefficient. right? If you remember the definition of the mass transfer coefficient, the solute flux is nothing written as k times concentration difference. So, k is nothing but inverse of resistance. right? So, the overall resistance can be so, so the re resistance the film resistance is is nothing but inverse of mass transfer coefficient right so therefore you can write down and and you cannot de de uh, determine the values of resistances what you can you can you can estimate the value of mass transfer coefficient from the correlations or relations available to you like the Sherwood number relations available to you. So, you can you will be able you will be uh, in a position to estimate the mass transfer coefficient and then you can connect it as a uh, connecting to resistances. So, overall resistance can be written as 1 over k overall mass transfer coefficient. Okay. So, this is nothing but 1 over k f this r f is inversely proportional to mass transfer coefficient k f is the mass transfer coefficient in the fit side plus L by d m d i m plus 1 over k d. Okay. That means, and how k f will be estimated if it is a laminar flow, flow you can find out the you can use the Sherwood number relation k d e over d as 1.86 or 85 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. So, you know the Reynolds number in the feed side, you know the properties. So, therefore, you know the Smith number and you know the geometric uh, you know dimension of the channel you are talking about where the flow is occurring d equivalent and the length. So, therefore, you can calculate the uh, whole right hand side you know the equivalent diameter you know the solute diffusivity you will be in a position to find out to estimate the mass transfer coefficient. If you put the value of Reynolds number in the fit side because the uh, generally the, uh, the dialysis side flow rate will be 2 times or 3 times more compared to the fit side velocity fit side flow rate. Okay. So, if you put the velocity corresponding to the fit side value then you will be getting the you will be getting the value of mass transfer coefficient in fit side. If you put the value of uh, dialyzed side flow rate you will be uh, the velocity corresponding to the dialyzed side flow rate you will be uh, and, and the di dimensions in the dialyzed channel then you will be getting the mass transfer coefficient from the dialyzed side. If the flow is turbulent, you have to use the Dieter's Volta Volta relationship to estimate the uh, mass transfer coefficient. Okay. So, depending on your situation, 
you, you can you can estimate the mass transfer coefficients and can can will be able to uh, calculate the uh, you know the overall resistance and can find out the overall solute flux that is going into the that is going transferring trans getting transported from the feed side to the dialyzed side okay now in the next slide in the next work what we will be doing we will be trying to calculate the net mass flux how to do the calculation calculate the net mass flux across the membrane in a dialyzed unit okay so we now will be knowing the operating conditions knowing the operating condition means uh, feed flow rate in the dialysis site and in the feed site the bulk concentrations in the um, uh, feed site and the dialysis site and the geometric values that like uh, diameter equivalent diameter length etc so all these are basically operating conditions and the geometric factors knowing this value you sh we should be able to position to calculate the value of the amount that is uh, of the solute that is being transported across the dialysis membrane that will serve our purpose. So, let us try to do that. So, let us have a concentration versus area. So, it is a counter current flow. So, therefore, you will be having the C i f and you will be having the, uh, the outlet C o f okay. and this is C I D, this is the inlet for the dialyzed and this is the outlet for the dialyzed. And we since uh, the, the way we have done the heat transfer analysis and uh, we derived the uh, delta T L M T D, we will be doing the same analysis here as well. We consider since the, uh, uh, since the height of the channel is constant, so this is nothing but the, this area membrane area is nothing but the same as L length. So, length multiplied by the total height will give you the total membrane area. Okay. So, uh, we, we consider a differential element and in this differential element the d m is the amount differential amount of mass that will be transported from the feed side to the dialyzed side and here you will be having a concentration difference of delta c let us say. Okay. So, let us write down what are these quantities, what is this dm, dm is nothing but dm, you can write it dm dot because per unit a, a time mass flow rate across the differential element dA and what will be that? It will be nothing but k 0 times delta c times dA, delta a, okay, dA. Okay. So, that will be the, so mass transfer coefficient multiplied by delta C multiplied by the area of mass transfer. So, that will be give you the total mass flow rate in that across the differential element and we write it as V f dot is volumetric flow rate of feed. And V d dot is nothing but the volumetric flow rate of dialyzed. Now, these two are basically the operating conditions. You are setting the value of volumetric flow rate in the feed side, you are setting the value of volumetric flow rate on the dialyzed side. Okay. So, therefore, uh, your the mass balance over the differential element gives you d m dot is equal to minus v f dot times d c f is equal to v d dot times <coughs> d c d. At the steady state, the volumetric flow rate values will be cons will be constant. So, since in, the, in, in d m the change in uh, concentration in the feed size is delta c f, okay, in the change in concentration is delta c d. So, this will be give you the, uh, uh, the mass balance and rearrangement of these equations this gives you d c f is nothing but minus d m dot by v f dot and 
d c d is nothing but d m dot times v d dot and what is our delta c? Our delta c is nothing but c f minus c d and what is d delta c? d delta c is nothing but d c f minus d c d. So, just put the value of d c f here. So, you will be getting an expression of <coughs> d delta c and d delta c is nothing but minus 1 over v f dot plus 1 over v d dot times d m dot. Now, we have already seen the expression of d m dot from our previous analysis in terms of mass transfer coefficient and what is that? If you remember, we just wrote this equation earlier that d m dot is nothing but k 0 delta c times d a. So, if you put it there, so you will be getting d of delta c is nothing but 1 by bracket 1 over v f dot plus 1 over v d dot times k 0 d a times delta c. Okay. So, this gives almost the, uh, the same type of analysis in heat transfer that whatever we have done in a counter current heat transfer analysis. Okay. Now, this equation can now be you just you just bring delta c in the denominator on the left hand side and this equation can be integrated between the inlet and outlet of the flow regime of the of the equipment. Okay. So, you can integrate this that the resulting equation across the length of or, or length means it is basically proportional to the area right length of dialyzer. So, d delta c over delta c from the inlet to the outlet will be nothing but 1 by v f dot plus 1 by v d dot integral k 0 d a from inlet to outlet from inlet to outlet means over the overall area from 0 to a at the inlet the area was 0 and, and the outlet the full area will be available. So, you can get the uh, you know integration of this. So, you will be getting l n delta c outlet divided by delta c inlet is nothing but minus 1 over v f dot plus 1 over v d dot. Okay. K 0 is constant it, is, it, is, it does not depend on the area. So, you will be getting k 0 integration of k 0 d a okay, from 0 to a. Okay. Now, we can in integrate the other equation the what is the other equation d delta c d delta c is nothing but 1 over v f dot plus 1 over v d dot uh, times d m dot. Okay. This, this, this equation we have derived earlier we can integrate this out and see what we get between the inlet and the outlet okay and this will be from 0 to m dot a total mass transfer so you'll be getting delta c outlet minus delta c inlet is nothing but 1 over vf dot plus 1 over vd dot times m dot okay now you can you can just uh, this integral will be returning you the value k0 times a right it will be giving you a value k0 times a now divide this to equation what you will be getting you can do away with this flow rate as well okay just divide this equation divided by the, uh, this equation by this equation and finally what you get is that m dot you will be getting as kg per second k0 times a delta c out minus delta c in divided by l n delta c out divided by delta c in. Okay. So, m dot is nothing but k 0 times a delta c l m t d. What is l m t d? This is basically log mean temperature difference. So, what is delta c out? Delta c out is basically change in, change in concentration at the outlet surface. Okay. What is the at the outlet surface? What is it? This is <coughs> c feed out minus C dialyze it in that is delta C out and what is delta C in it is C feed in minus C dialyze it out okay, this is counter current right. So, that is the definition of delta C out and delta C in. So, the amount of mass that has been transferred from the feed side to the dialyzate side per unit time 
okay, will be given by this expression k 0 that is the overall mass transfer coefficient area of mass transfer and delta c l m t t. Delta c l m t t is nothing but some kind of mean concentration mean concentration existing difference mean concentration difference existing in the module in terms of fit values both in the dialyze, the inlet values both in the dialyzed and the fit side and outlet values both in the dialyzed and the fit side. So, you will be you will be knowing four concentrations two concentration at the inlet two concentration at the outlet knowing these values knowing the operating condition that means flow rate etcetera by knowing the operating condition means flow rate right this using the flow rate you can find out the uh, mass transfer coefficient in the fit side you will you can you will be in a position to calculate the mass transfer coefficient in the dialyzed side. If you know the thickness of the membrane and if you know what is the diffusivity of the solute through the membrane DIM then you can estimate the resistance or the um, resistance in the porous membrane as well. Now these three using these three values you will be able to calculate what is the overall mass transfer coefficient. Once you will be able to calculate and if you have something in, in, in your mind okay, this is my target that you, sh you should get a mass amount of mass transfer let us say this mass kg per second let us say 20 milligram per second or something like that then you will be in a position to calculate what is the membrane area that you are going to set or are you going to use to achieve that goal. Now if this concentration is in kg per meter cube then the value of m dot will be kg per second if this concentration is expressed in kilo mole per meter cube or moles per liter then this uh, uh, m dot will be either kilo mole per second or mole per second depending on the concentration of uh, you know unit of the concentration you are going to have it. Okay. So, we can write it that m dot will be nothing but k 0 times a delta c l m t d and value of k 0 the overall mass transfer coefficient will be uh, 1 over k f plus L over d i m plus 1 over k d. We know how to estimate the mass transfer coefficient in the fit side, how to estimate the mass transfer coefficient in the dialysate side and L is the membrane thickness and d i m is the solute diffusivity through membrane. In the last class we discussed a method how to estimate the solute diffusivity through the membrane phase if we know the bulk diffusivity, but there are also some other factors involved those are basically the uh, radius of the solute equivalent radius of the solute and equivalent and the radius of the average radius of the pore and there are two more factors one was the porosity of the membrane another was the tortuosity of the membrane. Now, all these quantities are very difficult to estimate therefore, uh, and al also the in the membrane there will be a process distribution not the not a single pore. So, using the method that we have discussed in the last class that is that will in most of the cases that will give you erroneous results. Okay. So, therefore, what you have to do now in the next, so we, we, we know how to estimate k f, how to estimate k d, now we will see how to estimate the d i m. Estimation of membrane thickness is not a problem at all that can be easily found out either in uh, you can use a screw gauge or if you do not uh, if it is so fine you can take a cross section and go to a uh, give a uh, scanning electron microscopy image and you can get the thickness of the membrane that is absolutely not, not a problem. So, let us find let us see how we estimate the d i m. <coughs> diffusivity in the membrane phase. So, now in this case we should in order to estimate d i m we should conduct a batch dialysis operation. What is the batch dialysis that we have discussed in the last class? It is a basically batch cell. There are two, two cells or the two chambers are you know it is separated by a dialysis membrane and in one chamber in both the chambers are initially at the same volume let us say and you just give some solute concentration in the fit side and lead the and let the system and leave the system on, on its own. So, initially there was no concentration of solute in the dialysate side. So, more solutes will be diffusing through the membrane and coming onto the dialysate side. Now, if you put a start you know the, if you put two starters in the fit side and in the dialysate side the, the film resistance or the mass transfer coefficient will be almost 0. Okay. So, so, it will be basically controlled by the diffusion of the of the membrane diffusion through the membrane. So, therefore, one uh, after after some time 
the concentration in the dialysate will keep on increasing. So, concentration difference will be decreasing. So, there will be at a, after a long time, you, you, you know, when uh, you, you will be we will be you basically you are going to take up samples from the dialysate side and going to measure the concentration. The, the, the solute will be diffusing from the feed side to the dialysate side and it will, it, will, it will keep on continuing unless and until the concentration on both, both the chambers will be equal. Okay. So, that is the idea and uh, if you write down, so uh, if, if you can calculate the profile of concentration in the dialysate side, how it varies then you will be able to estimate the what is DIM. Now, so, so we will we'll do that. Now, let us look into the schematic situation where whatever, whatever we are talking about, uh, we, are, we are assuming that there are batch dialysis, it is a batch dialysis dialyzer and some concentration of feed is put there and it is a dialysate site initially the concentration of the solute in the dialysate site would be equal to 0. Now, both the uh, you know cells are well stirred. So, therefore, you can you can assume that film resistance there is nothing called film resistance that means film resistance does not exist. Stirring is appropriate. to remove film resistance. So, therefore, what we will be doing? So, so by doing that you are assuming that concentration or concentrations are uniform both in film side and dialysis side because you are giving high stirring. So, there is no existence of film and whatever the concentration here same concentration will be prevailing anywhere in the chamber. Now, let us write down the governing equation of, uh, of, of the solute balance in both the chambers. We do a species balance equation means solute balance in feed and solute balance in dialysate side. Okay. If you do that and you write down the equation, it is basically accumulation is equal to in minus out, rate of accumulation is equal to rate of material in minus rate of material out. So, d d t of C i d multiplied by the V d is equal to A m d i m times L C i f minus C i d. This is the rate of accumulation V d is the volume of the liquid in the dialysate site or you can say if it is fully occupied then it is the volume of the dialyzer. Okay. And C i d is the concentration of the solute in the dialysate site and uh, the amount of material that is going into the system. Uh, it is basically C i f the total difference is A m times D i m L into C i f minus C i d. And if you the other side in the fit side you will be getting C i f times V f is equal to minus A m D i m L C i f minus C i d. Okay. So, this only indicates this plus sign means the dialysate will be gaining the solute and the fit side will be this minus means fit side will be losing the solute. The initial conditions are at T is equal to 0, C i f is equal to C i f naught that is initial concentration and any instantaneous uh, and the concentration C i d will be C i d naught will be equal to 0 at time T is equal to 0. Okay. Now, these two equations can be solved you know they are simultaneous ordinary differential equations there are several ways one can solve it and one can really get an analytical solution, but the easier way to uh, solve them you just Use, uh, use Laplace transform and change the ordinary differential equations into algebraic equations. Then it is basically two algebraic equations and the uh, two can be two variables can be solved and then you can take the inverse Laplace and get the equation. Okay. So, apply Laplace transform
will be the, the transformed equations are those who have done the mathematics course in the last semester they they are i think they remember the laplace transform okay s c i d bar is nothing but a m d i m l v d c i f bar minus c i d bar this bar indicates the transformed variables s c c i f bar minus c i f not <coughs> equal to minus a m d i m over l v f c i f bar minus c i d bar. Now, let us assume a m d i m over l is equal to k some constant. Okay. So, this above equations becomes s c i d bar is equal to k by v d c i f bar minus C i d bar and this becomes S C i f bar minus C i f naught equal to minus k over v f C i f bar minus C i d bar. Okay. Now, these two equations and there are two unknowns 1, 2 and there are two equations. So, they can be easily solved. I am not again I am omitting couple of steps. So, you can do it by yourself and you will be getting the overall solution in terms of C i d bar, because we are interested in C i d the concentration in the dialyzed site, because we are going to take out samples from the dialyzed site and going to check its concentration. So, we are interested in tracking the concentration profile in the dialyzed site. So, C i d bar is nothing but k times uh, v d times C i f naught divided by S square plus S k 1 over V f plus 1 over V d. So, by solving these two equations, you will be getting an expression of concentration the uh, concentration of solute in the dialyzed site and under the transformed uh, in, in the transform notation. Okay. Now, we can further simplify it by defining another variable I am basically getting it you know in a compact form A is equal to k times 1 over V f plus 1 over V d. So, C i d bar basically becomes k by V d C i f naught divided by a into 1 over s minus 1 over s plus a. So, we, we, we make this s square plus s k and all this in rational fractions okay. and we know that and now you are in a position to take the inverse Laplace, because now they are in amenable situation amenable you know form. What will be this? This the inverse of this will be 1 and inverse of this will be e to the power minus a t right. So, take inverse Laplace transform and you will be getting the variation of solute concentration in the dialysis site as a function of time as C i f naught V f divided by V f plus V d into 1 minus e to the power minus k 1 over v f plus v d times t. And your so, this, this is the complete solution and your k is nothing but a m d i m over l. Now, what we can do? Uh, you are basically you can you can uh, make this thing you know more amenable because C i f naught is known to you, you know the fit co the initial concentration of the solute in the fit side, the volume of fit chamber, the volume of the dialysis chamber both are known to you and you are going to monitor C i d as a function of time. So, either you, uh, you fit a curve 
in this form because you know the experimental value. So, you fit a curve and estimate the value of k or you can make you can just make it you know more amenable let us say this whole thing is b. So, this becomes b into 1 minus e to the power k times let us say 1 by v f plus 1 over v d is d okay, d times t. Okay. This this let us say b and this, this becomes d. Okay. So, now what you can do is just uh, c i d over b is nothing but 1 minus e to the power e minus k d t. So, e to the power minus k d t is nothing but 1 minus c i d times b and take the log on both side and see what you get. Okay. Now, we are going to take the log on both side, it becomes e to the power minus k d t is equal to 1 minus c i d times b. So, if you take the log l n 1 minus c i d by b is nothing but minus k d t. Right? So, now you since you are you are, you are monitoring the value of c i d at every point of time and b is basically uh, the quantity c i f not into v f by v f plus v d that is known to you, you plot this quantity versus t. If you plot ln 1 minus c i d by b versus t, you are going to expect a straight line with a diminish with a decreasing slope because of the minus sign. So, you are going to get something like this. Okay. So, these are the let us say these are the experimental points these are the experimental points you fit a straight line. Now, in this straight line let us look into the slope, this slope will be nothing but k times d okay. and what is d capital D? Capital D is basically 1 by v f plus 1 by v d, capital D is nothing but 1 over v f plus 1 over v d. So, that will be known to you. So, you can estimate d also. So, if you if so therefore, if you can you can estimate the slope from this straight line and can get the value of k and what is k? k is nothing but a i m d i m over l is nothing but slope divided by d. So, d i m can be estimated as slope divided by d multiplied by l over a i m that is a membrane area. This, this is not A i m, it should be A m, A m is basically the membrane area, I stands for the solute. So, so once you will be getting the slope from the fitted straight line and you know the value of d, there is nothing but the relation between the volume of the fit chamber and the dialyzed chamber and L is the thickness of the membrane. So, you could be able to estimate the value of diffusivity of the solute through the membrane and the check is if you know the uh, bulk diffusivity. Bulk diffusivity is always known to you through some correlations or from the literature that will be 2 to 3 order of magnitude less. Less compared to bulk values, bulk value of that diffusivity. So, this diffusivity through the membrane, porous membrane will be around 2 to 3 order of magnitude less compared to the value in the uh, Bulk, bulk diffusivity. Okay. Now, once you get that, you, you, so basically you have to conduct one batch dialysis experiment that is a very simple experiment and keep on monitoring the concentration at various time of time points okay. and then from the uh, plot, plot suitable plot of this quantity you will be able to calculate or estimate the membrane diff the diffusivity of the solute in the membrane phase. Now, let us look into the various aspect of design of continuous dialyzer. Let us write down the or draw the schematic once again. Okay.
feed is CIF exit. That is it for it. Where is the exit? So the F is the uh, feed flow rate and D is the dialysate flow rate at the steady state. CIFI is the concentration of the IF solute in the feed side, inlet side, inlet, uh, feed inlet, and CIFE is nothing but the concentration of IF solute at the feed exit. Similarly, you have CIDI and CED. In most of the cases, CIDI will be equal to 0 because we are going to use fresh dialysate to maintain the maximum concentration difference. Okay. So, the assumptions involved in this analysis are. First one is constant feed flow rates, feed and dialysate, okay. constant feed and dialysate flow rate. That means, on the steady state, they are not varying with time. Dialyzer performance. depends on the value of film and membrane resistance. Of course, so you do not have any other you know driving force or any other thing. So, basically film resistances on both the sides and membrane resistance will dictate the uh, dialyzer performance and film thickness. solely depends on the film thickness solely depends on the geometry and velocity profile in the channel. So, let us write down the design. So, under these assumptions, let us write down the design equations. Okay. So, what are the design equations? The design equations of continuous dialyzer. First one is transmembrane solute flux that is m i is nothing but k 0 overall, uh, this k 0 bar is basically overall mass transfer coefficient that we have defined earlier a m times delta c i th solute l m t d. Okay. Delta c l m t d is nothing but delta c at the inlet minus delta c at the outlet divided by l n delta c at the inlet delta c at the outlet. Okay. Now, molar uh, the flux can also be represented, this can also be represented if you do a overall balance, overall solute balance in the feed side and overall solute balance in the dialysate side. That means, the amount that is going across the dialysis membrane to the dialysate side will be basically the, sol the total amount of solute that is coming to that side. So, if you do a, uh, the solute flux can also be written as If you do an overall solute balance in the feed side as well as in the dialysate side, you will be getting the same information. So, that means M i is nothing but V f multiplied by C i f i minus C i f e is equal to V d C i d e minus C i d i. Okay. So, so, this is the V f and V d are constant at the steady state. So, V f multiplied by C i f i is amount of solute that is going into the feed side and this multiplied by this means amount of solute that is going out of the feed side. 
Now, the dif difference between the two will be nothing but the transmembrane flux. That means, the amount of solute that has been transported from the feed side to the dialyzed side and same will be the amount of solute gained in the dialyzed, si uh, dialyzed side. So, if you know out of these four, four concentration or if you know, um, uh, 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 if you do not know one of them, you can get by this balance equations. Okay. Or if you know the concentrations, but you would like to like to like to that if you know the all the all the four concentration means you are aiming for particular extent of separation. Okay, so in that case you can you can design what is the value of Vf by Vd. Okay, so the, the how much dialysate fluid you will like to uh, keep in your system? Is it two times of feed fluid or is one point five times of feed fluid or is four times of feed fluid? That can also be estimated by this. So, some of the parameters may not be known. So, you can estimate them by using this overall balance equation, but this overall balance equations under no way will give the value of membrane area that will be requiring to estimate the uh, to, to uh, design the dialyzer that will be coming from this govern from this equation. Okay. Uh, so, using this equation one can design a continuous dialyzer. Design means how much membrane area is required to affect a particular separation given the other operating conditions, for example, flow rate and concentrations. Now, sometimes one defines the dialyzer efficiency as well. So, so this term you should not be, uh, you should be familiar with dialyzer efficiency. It is defined, and this efficiency is defined as eta, and is defined is actual amount of solute depleted in the feed, feed divide the maximum amount of solute maximum amount of separation possible in a given dialyzer. Okay. What is actual amount of solute that is that you are that is depleted in the feed that means volumetric flow rate V f multiplied by the concentration that is going into the system minus concentration that is going out of the system in the feed side that is the actual depletion of the solute that you are going to get in the feed side. Right. So, this is nothing but the C i f i minus C i f e. So, this difference multiplied the volumetric flow rate will give you the actual amount that is get going to be depleted. Or what is the maximum amount <coughs> V f C i C i f i minus V d times C i d i. In most of the cases, so that is the maximum possible one can have, because this is the amount of solute that is going into the system in the feed side and this is the amount of solute that is coming into the dialyzed site at the entry point. That is the maximum concentration difference one can expect in the whole dialyzer that is the this difference is the maximum concentration difference of the solute one can expect. right? Because the maximum solute is occurring at the fit and, and, uh, and uh, this is the maximum solute that is coming into the dialyzer. In most of the cases C i d i will be equal to 0 because you are going to get going to put fresh dialyzer. Therefore, the fresh dialyzer therefore, the concentration difference is maintained maximum. In most of the cases C i d i will be equal to 0. So, sometimes by putting computing this quantity knowing the values of all the other quantities one can define the efficiency of the dialyzer as well. That, that is the way how to estimate, how to calculate the, how to design a, an actual uh, continuous dialyzer. And what is the shortcoming of this model? It is basically a one dimensional model, right. So, we, we have not considered any, uh, you know, any, any detailed, uh, you know, variations of the velocity field. For example, it is, we are, we are assuming the velocity, for example, the velocity we are assuming it is the flat profile. The whole velocity is going to be as a plug flow, the we are, because we are, we are calculating the mass transfer coefficient from the cross sectional average velocity 
because you know the flow rate if, if you put a rotameter you know the flow rate you know the cross sectional area divide the flow rate, divide the flow rate by the cross sectional area of the flow you will be getting the average velocity based on that average velocity you are calculating the Reynolds number ok. So, it is basically one dimensional uh, approach that whatever we have done. So, in the next class we will look into a how to model a how to go for a detailed design, but any one dimensional model is a, is good enough to get to design a, any continuous dialyzer and in the next class we will look into the higher order models uh, more accurate models ok. Thank you.